I thought that Beware punching through a boulder was impressive, but throwing a tree in the air before catching it in midair and then planting it to the ground might have surpassed that. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, episode 122 of the Sun and Moon anime titled You're Being Watched, Team Rocket's Alola form just dropped, and in this episode, Matori has come to Alola to pick up Beware, to which Team Rocket said they had captured in episode 12. Well, how did that go for her? Let's find out. The episode begins with Beware bringing food to the cave while Team Rocket are getting ready to tend to their donut van. However, just then, they get a call from HQ. It's Matori, and she tells them that Giovanni wants them to send that Beware over to them, which is a problem since they haven't caught her yet. They just lied about that last time and said they caught it to get the headquarters off their backs. They essentially said no by flailing their arms around and reacting, so Matori tells them that she's coming to Alola to grab it by force. We go to the Pokemon school and our heroes say hello to Kui before talking about their Z-Rings. Now that everyone has a Z-Ring, Sofkali says that he's researching how to do his Z-Moves, and Lily says that she's working hard to be able to pull off her Z-Move. Malo says that for her, it hasn't even sunk in that she has a Z-Ring and a Z-Crystal. Because there are three people in the room who haven't used a Z-Move yet, Kukui tells them that they should start practicing their Z-Poses out in the courtyard. Ash and Kiawe and Lana also want to do something since the league is coming up, so Kukui tells them that they should figure out a way to better incorporate their Z-Moves into their battles, since that can be the deciding factor between winning and losing a match. Basically, what Pokemon in each battle will you use a Z-Move for, and when. So he also tells them to go to the courtyard to practice as well. Back in the Rocket hideout, while Beware is organizing the berries, Team Rocket get ready to throw a Pokeball and capture it. They're nervous at first, but they presume that since they've been together for so long, Beware might not mind being captured. They go for broke and Jesse toss the Pokeball, only for Beware to catch the Pokeball and crush it into dust. They start freaking out as it was walking towards them, but it just walks away like nothing. They all concede that no matter how hard they try, Beware would never be willing to go to Team Rocket HQ. In fact, none of their other Pokemons would either. Marini's too attached to James and Mimikyu's too cold to Jesse. Just then though, Maturi shows up in front of them and asks where the Beware is. She looks around and sees all the Pokemon they have and James' face after being bit by his Marini before we cut to the Beware lifting a tree as Team Rocket and Matari get there to see him toss that tree in the air before planting it back to the ground, pun intended. Matari is very impressed by its physical ability and demand that they hand him over, but Team Rocket tell her that they can't. They make an excuse that they're planning to use her to capture some strong Pokemons and she buys it, but she tells them that she's gonna watch them and that if they fail to capture these strong Pokemon, she's gonna take Beware back to Kanto. We then cut to them sneaking around the Pokemon school where Jesse tells Matari that this is where all the strong Pokemon they're looking for are located. That's where all of our heroes are in the courtyard practicing their Z-moves. They talk about Meltan and Pikachu and just as they're looking, they see Lily practicing a Z-move and they get freaked out. Remember, Jesse and James don't know that Mallow, Lily, and Softglee's got a Z-ring and a Z-crystal. They imagine getting hit by three Z-moves and getting sent packing which caused them to spaz out. Who's that Pokemon? It's Beware! Matari asks them just what they're freaking out about as she tells them to look closer at their Z rings. Our heroes are just practicing their pose so they don't have their Z crystals on. Kukui comes to them and tells them that they're doing well in their practice and Maturi tells them that even though they're the lowest member of Team Rocket, they need to be more collected. However, just then, they hear Ash using Corkscrew Crash before Pikachu smashes into the sandbags they're hiding behind, sending them flying. We then cut to Team Rocket and Maturi heading somewhere else to capture a strong Pokemon, which this time it turns out to be Drampa. They throw its favorite berries all over the place, hoping to lure it, and talk about how they have experience with how powerful this Pokemon is. It comes out and starts eating the berries, and Team Rocket get ready to battle. Jesse throws out her Mimikyu, but like always, it ignores Drampa as it's not Pikachu. Then, James throws out his Marini, but like always, it jumps on its head and bites it. As Matari and Alola and Meowth go, good grief, Jesse wants to prove them wrong, so she throws James the Z-Ring that they have, along with the dark Z-Crystal. They start doing their Z-Move, and I love their Z-Move song. It's basically the lyrical version of their motto theme, and I think it sounds great. As they're doing their Z-Move, even Matari's impressed, but just as they're about to attack, they have to stop because Stuffle steps in front of the Drampa and if Stuffle's there, that means Beware is here and it grabs everyone before taking them back to the hideout. Back in the hideout, Maturi and Alolan Meowth are in front of the Beware. She's staring at them and wants them to eat her berries, but they're hesitating. So she dips her hand in honey and shoves them in her mouth. After tasting the honey, Maturi and Meowth seem to really enjoy it. However, they try to act professional before getting another berry stuck in their mouth. At nighttime, Team Rocket and Stuffle are sleeping while Beware is in the lake swimming. Maturi and Meowth are up planning to capture 
Stuffle, which should eventually be as strong as Beware once it evolves. They take the Sleeping Stuffle, which Meowth sees. After they leave, Meowth tells Jesse and James what happened and that they have to think about a way to try to get Stuffle back. Otherwise, and this isn't said in the episode, but I'm pretty sure that they're terrified that Beware is going to be furious, which is a scary sight to see. They figure out something, and as Mothery is taking the Stuffle, Jesse calls out to her and just starts doing small talk to distract her, while James and the others switch out the sack containing Stuffle with something else. Mothery then turns around and leaves and grabs the new sack, which, if it didn't contain Stuffle, what was it? Well, we find out that it was Meowth, dressed up as Stuffle. A little and Meowth tries to fury swipe Meowth's disguise off, but Meowth dodges, and as it's doing that, Beware hears our Meowth in the helicopter and somehow jumps to it, smashing the window and bringing back Meowth while also somehow making the aircraft explode. The next day, Team Rocket are just chilling on top of the cave and they wonder what happened to Mothery and her crew. Just then, a Team Rocket apricorn camera looking thing extends and it's Mothery and Meowth. They ask for the regular update, but when they see Beware's face, they freak out before Beware destroys the device and that's the end of the episode. The after credit scene is Team Rocket has built a Beware robot to send to Team Rocket headquarters but the problem is that they built it inside, so they have no way to send it out. Originally, I was really apathetic when the preview for this episode dropped, and I gotta say, this episode surprised me. It was a better episode than I thought it would be. Team Rocket's always been one of the best core characters in the anime, and this continued to be spotlighted here. In this episode, we can see their goofy side as always, we also see their strong side in the fact that they can use a Z-move, and we get to see their caring side and making sure that Stuffle doesn't get taken. They're also willing to sacrifice for each other, which is why their chemistry works so well. Speaking of Z-moves, it was also great to see them use a Z-move again. They haven't used a Z-move in battle since like episode 76 when Mimikyu used its Z-move move on Pikachu. I actually thought that the fake out here also was brilliant because you knew something was going to cause them to stop or fail, but forcing them to stop because of Stuffle only to get captured by Beware and sent back to the hideout was great. The one thing in this episode, and Sun and Moon does this all time so I shouldn't be surprised, is take random moments from the episode and turn it into something good. For example, the flashback that they show in this episode of Team Rocket telling Giovanni and Matori was from episode 12 and that moment was so long ago that no one would have cared if it never got followed up on, but the fact that they did kind of makes me appreciate this anime even more. If this was real life, this episode would leave some questions about Team Rocket's future. Most likely, nothing's gonna change though. They're still gonna be chasing Ash around next season. But realistically, since they refuse to give up a Pokemon, it should be something. But it is a kid's show, so like I said, it's probably not gonna have any consequence. Who knows though, maybe the anime will surprise me. Speaking of which, this could also be the last or maybe the second to last time we see Matari and Alola. This really did felt like a send off for her for this season. I could maybe see Team Rocket being involved in the Moan Rescue arc somehow, but for the most part, I think Team Rocket's involvement is now just going to be one-offs until the league where they're planning to participate. Speaking of which, like I said before, I'm glad that they showed when Team Rocket wants to battle, they can. If they do end up participating in the league, they need credibility, and their fight against Trampa showed no fear and being able to use Z-Move was a really good indication of their battling ability. This is a fun episode, no question. But this episode, in my opinion, is more about setting up the next episode. But before I talk about that, I'll just say this. This episode's fun. You don't have to watch it in order to understand any of the ongoing plots. It doesn't really advance anything. But it's enjoyable filler, and if you check it out, you'll enjoy it. Alright, like I said earlier, this episode was really just a catalyst for next episode where our hero, specifically Softclees, is going to learn how to use a Z-move. I like training episodes in anime. I like them in Diamond and Pearl when Ash was learning how to use Ice Aqua Jet. I like them in Naruto when Naruto was learning how to use the Rasengan. And I'll probably enjoy seeing Softclees learn how to use the Bugnium Z. So I look forward to this episode. But anyways, that's it for my Pokemon Sun and Moon anime review. Thank you so much for watching. If you missed my Detective Pikachu review, you can click on the card to watch it. If you like this video, drop me a like. It does really help me out. Give me your thoughts on the episode in the comments below and subscribe for more Pokemon related content. You can follow me on Twitter at the Gaming, and I will talk to you guys later. Peace.